looking at angle A right now. Angle A. Can you guys tell me what the hypotenuse is in this triangle? I don't even need to go from angle A. I can. What's the hypotenuse in this triangle? Name it. Uh, here you go. 24. What's the hypotenuse? AB. All right. So everyone's good. AB. Still looking at angle A. Can you name the side that's opposite angle A in that triangle? The side that is opposite across from angle A for me. Uh, 21. CB. CB. Yep. Good work. CB is opposite. And now I'm going to have a final term, which is adjacent. And when I ask you for adjacent, I'm looking for a leg. Because you could say, oh, this AB is adjacent to it, but that's already the hypotenuse. So what leg? I'm looking for a leg when we say adjacent. What leg is adjacent to angle A? Eight. AC. All right. I just want you to have that ability because you'll see why here in a second. Can you guys do the same thing either on your own or in your group, but do the same thing from angle B for me now? Look at angle B and find me those same sides because they're going to change a little bit. All right, so from angle B, find those sides. Go ahead. Going from angle B. Okay, here you go. What's the hypotenuse? Uh, 22, hypotenuse. Uh, let's try again. One, hypotenuse. Yeah, it doesn't matter, guys. What angle I ask you to go from, it's always going to be the hypotenuse, AB. All right, now, what about the opposite side for me? Your opposite side, 15. AC, good work. And then my adjacent, the leg next to it would be three. What is it? CB, yep. All right, so everyone's good on those. Adjacent, hypotenuse, and opposite. Because those terms are going to come up in here in a second. All right, so let me introduce you now to three new ratios we're going to use. Because hills and sass and our special right triangle rules don't work anymore. Or won't work. So let me introduce, go, I'm going to go slowly. Your heads are going to spin. But once we do a bunch of examples, it'll be just fine. All right. I want to introduce you to three. And remember what a ratio is. A number over a number. That's all it is. It's a fraction. A number over a number. First thing I want to introduce is a new symbol up here. I don't want you to get freaked out. This symbol right here. All right. It's called theta. It's a Greek letter. All right. It's a variable. What variable do you guys usually use? X. X, right? Well, sometimes when we talk about an angle in math, we use the variable theta. It's a variable, okay? A degree measure. That's all that is. So let me introduce your first ratio to you. S-I-N. That's an abbreviation for, ready? Sine. That's called the sine ratio. And I abbreviate it S-I-N. It is not called sin. It is sine. But I just abbreviate it S-I-N. Here's how you find that ratio. You take the opposite side length and put it over the hypotenuse length. All right, so whatever length is opposite my angle, I put that number. Whatever the hypotenuse is, I put it on the bottom. That's called the sine ratio. Next ratio. How do you think I pronounce this? Cosine. Oh, good. Cosine, yes. But I abbreviate it COS. That ratio, I take your adjacent side length and I put it over the hypotenuse side, whatever the length is. And then the final one, the third one, tangent, abbreviated TAN. Okay, abbreviated TAN. And I take the opposite side and I put it over the adjacent side. Now, if your head's not spinning already, it's going to in a second because how the heck am I going to remember all this? Like tangent is opposite over adjacent side. Like how in the world am I ever going to remember all this stuff unless I sit there and memorize it, which I don't want you to. I have a little device to help you remember. Anybody uh, have seen Pocahontas, the Pocahontas movie? 
Okay. He wasn't featured in the movie, but Pocahontas has a brother. All right. Wasn't featured for some reason, got left out. His name was Sokotoa. All right. Sokotoa. His name will help you remember the ratios. Here's how. First, let's make sure we can spell it right. I can't help you with that. Sokotoa. How's his name help me remember these ratios? S stands for sign. How do I find the sign ratio? I take what's O. Opposite over hypotenuse. C for cosine. And how do I find cosine? I take which side? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally, T for tangent. I take the opposite side and put it over the adjacent side. So Sokotoa will help you remember how the ratios are set up. Sine, cosine, tangent. All right. Let's just hop right into it. I'm not going to go over the steps on how to do all this stuff. Let's hop right into it with triangle ABC. I would like first to know the ratio, and this is not on your paper, so you're going to have to add it in. What is the cosine of angle A? What ratio would be the cosine of angle A? That's the one I'm going to first start out with you guys. Cosine of angle A. All right, well, the first thing I need to know are what sides are involved in cosine. So I go back up to Sokotoa. What letters are next to C for cosine? 15. What letters are next to C in cosine? A over H, which stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm going from angle A. So everyone right now, look at angle A on the diagram. And find me, just like we did in the first problem today, What's the adjacent side length and what's the hypotenuse from angle A? Because those are the numbers I'm going to use. So what's adjacent to angle A and what's the hypotenuse to angle A? Here we go. Uh, let's take somebody new here. 17. What's adjacent to angle A? Next to angle A. That's not the hypotenuse. What is it? Which is how long? So I put 18 in. What's the hypotenuse length here? Two? Yep. I think I would know that by now. 18. What's the hypotenuse length? 22. 22. And that's it. That's the ratio, 18 over 22. I'm not going to require you to reduce. If you do, it's still fine. So the cosine of A is the ratio 18 over 22. All right, let me change it up. Ready? Find me the tangent ratio for angle B. Find the tangent ratio for angle B. So I go back to Sokotoa. What's tangent equal to? What's the tangent ratio? 24? What sides represent tangent ratio via? 24. Oh, four. Yep. Um, opposite and adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Yep. Now we're looking from angle B. Look at angle B, everybody, and find the opposite and adjacent side. And you got your ratio. Uh, six. Opposite from B is 18. Adjacent to B is 13. So there's our ratio, guys. Good work. Good work. One more. Let's see if you guys can try this one out on your own. Uh, let's do cosine B. Cosine of B. All right, cosine B. What's your ratio here? 12 when you're ready. Um, 13 over 22. Yep, 13 over 22, adjacent over hypotenuse from B. So is everyone all right finding the ratios? That's, what, that's your first job on tonight's homework. Here's how we're going to find missing sides now, using these three. Okay, using these three, this is how we're going to find missing sides. So let's talk about finding a side now. 
All right, look, look, just look at example one again. I'm not going to read the steps through with you. We're just going to hop right in. All right, I got a couple questions before I show you how to do the problem. What's wrong with the stuff we did before the quiz? That's what I want to talk about. All that stuff we did before the quiz, why can't I apply it here? All right, first off, I'm going to find side X. Why can I not use hills and sass? Why is this not a hill sass problem? There's no altitude drawn in there, correct. So that's out the window. Why can I not use Pythagorean theorem? I don't know. I don't have enough information, right? I'm missing side BC. So that's out. As a silly as a question as this is, why can I not use my 45, 45, 90 rules? It says 36. Right? It says 36. It's 30, 60, 90, same answer. It says 36. So do you guys see everything we've talked about? No shot. I can't use it. But I can use sine, cosine, tangent. All right? I can use sine, cosine, tangent. Here's, a, here's how we're going to decide which one to use, sine, cosine, or tangent. Everyone see the angle we're given? 36. I go from that angle. All right? I never go from the right angle. I should have mentioned that before. Let me go back a sec before I do this problem. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I always picked angles A and B. Anybody know why I never pick C, the right angle? What problems you'll run into if you use the right angle? Think about it with all the sides we do. Romeo? The opposite, the opposite and hypotenuse are the same. And if I said adjacent, meh, I got two options. So that's why we never go from the, we never use the right angle. Too many problems. So we always go from the other angle that's given, which is 36. What are the two sides I gave you? 15 and X. Are they opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse for the 36 degrees? So let's find out. Let me talk to somebody. Nine. Do we have a nine or any more? Nope. We should just regroup with numbers, actually. Seven. Okay, so good, good. X is the hypotenuse, everyone agrees? So please start getting in this habit. Label it as the hypotenuse. And when I say label it, just put a little H in parentheses that says, hey, I have the hypotenuse. What's the 15? Opposite. Oh, go ahead, Ellie, go ahead. Opposite. Opposite, so just like I did with the H, I'm going to put a little O next to 15. Now it's on you. Go back to Sokotoa. What ratio... Do I have enough information for it if I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse now? Write it out if you need to. Again, if I have the, uh, the opposite and the hypotenuse, one of these three ratios, which one is it going to be? Nine, three. It's going to be sine. Everyone agrees? I got enough info for sine? All right. Now let's build the equation. I'm going to use sine. But hey, instead of putting a B here, like I used to do, I know what B is. How many degrees in angle B? 36. So I'm, instead of putting angle B, I'm going to put 36. I know what it is. So I'm going to put sine of 36. Equals, what's the ratio equal to? Opposite over hypotenuse. So put your numbers there and, and variables. Opposite over hypotenuse and it makes it easy because you already labeled them. What's that ratio going to look like? 23 on the right side. 15 opposite over X hypotenuse. Perfect. Good. You just made an equation to solve. Now the question is, how do you solve it? Any thoughts? Because I, I don't want to reveal it. Via thoughts? Just, I mean, you can put on the this is what we did last unit, didn't we? Take a proportion and cross multiply. Good job. All right, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'll do it with you. Ready? Sine of 36 times what? X when I cross multiply equals, what do I get when I cross multiply the other two, the means there? 15. All right, good. So here we are. I cross multiply. That's where we are. We're solving for X. We're solving for X. So how do you think I get sine of 36 out of there? Use your algebra rules. Nothing's changing here. How do I get sine of 36 out of there to get X alone? 
Oh, I'm not subtracting it. It's being multiplied. Divide it out. Ready? Divide by the sine of 36. And then here is where your calculator is going to take over. X, whoa, whoa, X equals 15 over sine of 36. Now we're going to use our calculator to answer the question. Is everyone all right to this point? First thing I need you to do before we type in anything is I need your calculator to be in the right mode. All right. Go to mode. Do you see where it says radians and degrees? Radians and degrees? Well, this was what? 36, 36 degrees. So your calculator should be in degree mode. All right, don't worry about the radian one. That's for later on in the year. But this entire unit, you should be in degree mode. So if it's not, highlight it and press enter. All right, or your answers are going to be off from ours and you're going to be like, what's the deal? So make sure your calculator is in degree mode. You yourself, beast mode. Got it? Now I'm going to type this into my calculator. You may not know. Maybe some of you have figured out where the, where the buttons are. But So I, I get a fraction template out. On top, I put 15. On the bottom, hey, everyone take a look at this nice group of three here. Look familiar? Sine, cosine, tangent. That's where we're going. Sine. And now you got to put in the angle. 36. All right. Enter. And then just please pay attention to your rounding directions. Okay? Pay attention to your rounding directions. So that side length will be, what is it, nearest tenth? 25.5? And I have one more comment on this problem. I've been telling you all year and reminding you that this is, should be an above average class. And that's how I treat it. Starting now, if the diagram has units, so does your answer. Okay, let's get in that habit, please. Don't leave your answer naked. Diagram has units, so does your answer. All right, that took a little time. All right, we'll quicken it up now. All right, here we go. Number two, find side X. What angle are we looking at? What angle are you looking at? Angle V, 48. You never go from the right angle. So from 48 degrees, what side X and what side 37? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Figure out what they are to 48. Uh, here we go. Mm, nope. 22. Nope. 8. What's the X? Um, X is the adjacent. You got it. What's 37? 37 Perfect. All right. I got adjacent hypotenuse, everybody. Now I got to figure out which ratio to use. I have adjacent and I have hypotenuse. So I'll use which ratio of the three? 10? Cosine. Cosine. Good. Good. So everyone ready to set it up with me? Cosine abbreviated. COS. Don't put V anymore. We know what V is. 48. Cosine of 48 degrees equals what ratio am I going to put on the right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. It's already labeled. What's that ratio going to look like on the right? X over 37. X over 37. Good. And just like we did last problem, sure, put it over 1. Cross multiply. Ready? Cosine of 48 times 37. Now, notice here, what happens? What am I just left with on the right? Yeah, I don't have to divide out anything this time. Perfect. Nice. I just got to type that in my calculator. Oh, a oh, oh. couple things when you type it in your calculator. Ready? Cosine of 48. You got to close it after that. Watch. If I do times 37, 
your calculator is going to think whatever 48 times 37 is, I'll take the cosine of it. No, I just want you to take the cosine of 48. So make sure you close that sucker with parentheses. And there you go. And then round, what's this nearest whole number? And a nearest inch, so yeah. So 25 inches, units, units, units. Look good? Problems? All right. I don't want to say word problems, but some different diagrams now where we can use sine, cosine, tangent. This is going to be a classic problem in this section of the, you know, ladder leaning against the wall. Makes an angle of 75. Determine and state the length of the ladder. So where am I going to put my X here? The length of the ladder. It's leaning against the wall. It's leaning against the darn wall. Where am I going to put the X for my ladder? Romeo, help us. Yeah, thank you. Here's my ladder leaning against the wall. And Romeo gave it away, which is fine. That's the hypotenuse. I'm going from 75 degrees. What's the 15 then? What's my 15 going to be then? What side is my 15? Uh, 21. It is a leg. In particular, where is it? Opposite the 75. Good. Opposite and hypotenuse gives me what ratio to use? 11. Yep. 18. What ratio? Sine ratio. Good. Sine. 75 equals opposite 15 over x hypotenuse. Okay, go ahead, put it over one. Cross multiply. Sine of 75 times x equals 15. You are going to, bless you, you are going to have to take it one extra step, right? Divide both sides by sine of 75. Nearest tenth of a foot. Nearest tenth of a foot. Just so I know you're typing it into your calculator correctly. Nearest tenth of a foot, 24. When you're ready there, Romeo. Yep. Again, units, units, units. Keep reminding you. You got number two by yourself. Go ahead. See if you can handle one by yourself before we get into some other ones.
18 feet. All right, 18 feet. Cosine of 40 equals 14 over x. Divide both sides by cosine of 40. Yep, we're all good. All right, little Regents level question here. Which uh, ratio is equivalent to the sine of angle A? Sine of angle A. All right, well, uh, what's sine equal to here first? If I say Sokotoa, what two sides do you need to find the sine ratio? Uh, four via what two sides do I need to find the sine, sine ratio? Good. I need the opposite side and put it over the hypotenuse. Perfect. Uh, I see two triangles in this diagram, though. Don't you guys? I see two triangles. I see the small one and the big one. Which one do you want to try out first? Because one of the answers will be there. The other answer won't when I do each triangle. Zach? Small. Okay, everyone ready for the small triangle? Everyone go from angle A now. What's the side opposite angle A in the small triangle? Uh, 20, nothing. 17? That's BC. And what's the hypotenuse length here? Uh, four via, what's the hypotenuse of this small triangle? AB. And lucky for us, look, that is a choice, right? All right, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm still gonna challenge you here in this class, definitely. Let's say that's not a choice. So that means we gotta go to the big triangle now, right? So what else would be a possible option if that wasn't a selection? Name the opposite side in the big triangle now. Eight. The opposite side, so BC over AB is not an option, pretending it's not an option. So let me use the large right triangle now. What's opposite angle A in the large right triangle? DE. And what would be my hypotenuse that I would use for that triangle? 21. AD. So both of these are correct. Okay, both of them are correct. Any issues here? We're moving right along. I like our pace here. Before we get to... Uh, Big Al and Little Mike are having an argument again. The brothers are having an argument. All right, Big Al, hey, here you go. They both they both want to find side HJ. Okay, they both want to find side HJ. So here's Big Al's solution. He's saying the sine of 28 equals HJ over 20. Is that set up correctly to find HJ? Is it set up correctly to find HJ? I'm seeing some yeses and some noes. All right, well, look, look, ready? He's going from 28, and he's using sine. Remind me again what sine is equal to. What two sides are sine equal to? Via, remind me again. Yep, what's sine equal to? Okay, what's opposite 28, guys? What's opposite 28? Okay, which is there. And what's the hypotenuse? 20, he's good. Big Al's fine. Great equation. Little Mike now. Cosine, all right, first of all, where, what, 62? He's not using 28? Where's the 62 coming from? Where's the 62 coming from? Eddie? That's angle H because these add to 180. That's 62. So that's okay. That's okay that he's using that. He's using an angle in the triangle. That's not a right angle. That's fine. Is he using it correctly though? Let's figure it out. He's saying this is HJ over 20 as well. Cosine, what's it equal to? Cosine. 24, Romeo, cosine. So everyone look at 62 now. What's adjacent to it? HJ, what's the hypotenuse? Guess what? Both right. 
Yep, both equations are right. Okay, both are right. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Any questions? And for this next one, only studs need to do this one. Okay? Only studs should be doing this one. Ready? A ladder four feet long leans against the building. All right, do we, we know what this looks like now, right? A right triangle. Where are you going to put the four? Ladder leaning against the building. A four right here, four feet, right? Hypotenuse. Oh boy, this is when I get start getting fired up. The ladder is forming a 71 degree angle with the ground. Not with the air, with the ground. Where should I put the 71 now? With the ground, it's making an angle. Carter, please help. The bottom left. Thank you, with the ground. The ground is on the bottom of the figure. So 71 degrees. How, I, how high up the wall? Of the building does the ladder touch? Which leg am I looking for here? Horizontal, vertical? How far up the wall does it reach? Horizontal or vertical leg? What do we think? This should be. Don't make it a 50-50 guess here. Which leg? Touch the building. Here's the ground. Here's the building. How high up does it touch? I'm looking for this leg right here. Yep. Some of you may be wondering still, why did I say only studs do this? Because it doesn't seem too bad, right? All right, what's the X in the 42? Let's keep going. What's the X in the 42? George, what's the X here? The opposite. Yeah, good work. And how about the, high, the four? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, good. This is pretty standard, right? It's pretty standard. All right, O and H. 15. What do I use with O and H? Which ratio? Oh, sorry. Sine, 71. And you answered my next question already. Opposite X over hypotenuse 4. What's so bad about this problem, huh? I don't know. Maybe I guess I overhyped it. No, I didn't. All right, go ahead. Cross multiply. I'll do it with you. Sine 71 times 4. Was my calculator going to give me a crazy error? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Everyone's calculator gave them the same thing I did, yeah? Oh, we're not far from done. <laughs> no, we're not. We got a problem. And this is going to start happening now. And it's awareness. Reading carefully. Once you, anybody figures it out, let me know. We're reading carefully now. We just can't go to a diagram and fly through it anymore. There's a problem we have. Scott, fill us in. Yeah, round to the nearest tenth of an inch. Uh, what's the diagram in, though? Feet. That's a problem. So what's my... That 3.78 is not inches now, is it? It's what? It's feet because the diagram was in feet. But I want the final answer in inches. Got to make sure... Start getting the habit of checking. Rounding matches my units on the diagram, which it does not. So I need to convert this. Oh, boy. What do I need to do to this feet to convert it to inches? I know there's a 12 involved. Multiply it or divide it? Multiply it by 12. This is going to be a pain. I know. I'm going to try to trip you up as much as I can. Does your rounding directions match your diagram? Now, 
excuse me, now you can round to the nearest time. Forty five point four inches. And if some of you see it before you even start, go ahead, change the four feet to inches and you'll be fine. You're either going to do it at the beginning or at the end. All right, so if you see it right away, go ahead and change your uh, four feet to 48 inches. We all good there. Watch for the change in units. It's going to happen. You got six on your own. Before we end this, you got six on your own. Real quickly, did the units change at all? What I'm asking you to round to and what I give you, do the units change? No, just I just want you in that habit to check. I got centimeters, round on the nearest tenth of a centimeter, and they're already in centimeters. Perfect. Hopefully you're using sign ratio. And make sure you have units on your answer. Have units. Questions, comments at all? All right, sine, cosine, tangent. We're going to deal with it the next couple days. No school tomorrow. Homework's due on Monday. Pretty simple. All right, we don't move on until Monday. All right, good job. Thank you.